A lot of people want to buy their first investment property but don't have enough money saved up. What if I told you you can still buy a home even if you're dead broke? Well, you can. I've bought my last few homes using none of my own money. And I'm gonna teach you exactly how I did that so you can do it too. If you're new to the channel, my name's Justin Yarong. I'm a real estate investor and entrepreneur here in Las Vegas. I've made hundreds of videos teaching people about real estate, money, and self-development. And the goal of this channel is to help you grow your money and your mindset. Also, if you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Justin Yarong. Here's my secret. It's not that I buy homes with no money at all. It's just that I use other people's money. I utilize something called private money. And if you don't know what private money is, this is it. Private money is essentially money from an individual, money from someone that you know or even don't know, and they're just willing to lend you money in exchange for a return on their money. But these private money lenders, they're not actual lenders. They're not conventional lenders, or they're not hard money lenders. They're not banks. They're typically just individuals, someone who's willing enough to trust you with their money. Let's say you find a home out there and the purchase price is $150,000. A lot of people think that in order to buy a home like this, that you need to be pre-approved with a lender. Let's say a conventional lender that's gonna require you to put 20% down and you have to pay this interest over 30 years. And that's not the case. What you can do instead is utilize private money. So you can go to an individual, someone that you know in your circle, that has money. And you would ask this person if they want to invest in this deal in exchange for a return on their money. And this doesn't even have to be someone you know really well. It could be a stranger that you just meet because you're posting on social media or something like that. It just has to be someone that trusts you enough that you're gonna pay them back their money plus the return on their money. This is actually something I did on a recent deal of mine. I found a home and the purchase price was around $250,000. I got it under contract to buy, so I offered on the home. The seller agreed to and sign my offer and we now have a fully executed offer which basically means a fully signed offer and once I had that signed offer all I did is I went to someone I knew in the business that had a lot of money that probably could purchase this home in cash and I went to them and I said hey do you want to partner on this deal and split the profits I'll do all the work that comes with managing the escrow and the rehab and everything like that and I just need you to provide the money. He looked at the numbers, decided for himself that it was a great deal, and he said, yeah, how about we just split the profits 50-50? And at my eyes, at this point in my career, I was open to a 50-50 profit split, and I said, yeah, let's split this 50-50, you provide the money, I do the work, we have a deal. So that's exactly what we did. We just split the profits 50-50. And the even cooler thing about this deal is we didn't even fix it up and we still made a good profit. After taking a closer look at the numbers, we decided that we can sell the property as is to another investor without doing any repairs or anything else for a gross profit of $75,000. So we chose to do that instead of fixing it up ourselves and waiting four to six months of the rehab and just waiting for the home to sell on the market. We thought it was a better idea idea to just buy it and then resell it without doing any fixes because if we could make profit doing that, we thought that was a better option. And so here were the numbers on that deal. I found the home for $250,000. That was the purchase price. We're doing $0 in rehab and we're selling it to another investor for $325,000. That's a $75,000 gross profit that we're gonna be splitting 50-50. And after hearing that, I want you to realize the power of finding the deal. Because if you find the deal, I'm hoping that you understand now that once you find the deal, the money will come. Which brings me to my next point is when should you raise private money? A lot of people who are just starting out say that you should find your private money first so that you can secure your money and then go after deals and look for deals. I think the complete opposite. I truly believe that if you find a good deal, you will easily find the money. But the key word in that phrase is a good deal. It has to be a good deal that you find, then the money will come. If you just find what you think is a good deal, but it's not a deal, the money probably won't come because other people are going to analyze the deal and they're gonna say, hey, this isn't that great of a deal. Why would I lend you money on this? And if I'm being honest, I wasted a lot of my own time looking for these private money lenders before I even had a deal to pitch to them. I remember having all these FaceTimes and phone calls and Zoom calls with these potential private money lenders, but I didn't even have any deals. I wasted a lot of my time and I don't want you to make the same mistake. So if you're just starting out, 
or if you've even been in the game for a little while, keep on finding deals. Put all of your time and attention into looking for these deals, analyzing them, and I don't even care if you're looking for deals on market on the MLS or if you're hunting off market and talking directly to sellers. Whatever you're doing, put all your time, effort, and energy into looking for these deals, making offers. That's where your attention should be. And once you come across the deal, then you can worry about all this private money stuff. Now that you know what private money is and when to raise it, I wanna talk about how to raise it. If you're planning to raise money from a potential private money lender, you need to address two main questions. These are the questions that every single potential lender will be thinking or will say out loud. They're gonna wanna know, why should I trust you? And they're also gonna wanna know, what can you do for me? When it comes to trust, any potential lender is gonna be thinking, why should I invest with you when there is no shortage of people asking me for money? Why you? And when it comes to building trust with a potential lender, it really comes down to a few things. Number one, it comes down to how confident you are whenever you're speaking to them and whenever you're pitching the deal to them. They need to know that you are fully confident in what you are doing so that you can provide that return to them. So if your communication skills are poor and you're not confident and you don't know how to pitch the deal, work on that first. Work on talking to a lot of people and getting used to pitching these deals. The second thing about trust is that it's all about your personal brand and your image. Whether you are aware of it or not, you have your own personal brand. Whenever someone thinks of your name, they think of something. And if you don't know what that thing is, you need to work on your personal brand. You need to develop your image in a way that portrays yourself exactly how you want to be portrayed. And the good thing is, it's not that hard to build your personal brand. To do so, I'd encourage you to utilize social media. Post everything you are doing in real estate on social media. Let everyone know what you're doing and show them how committed you are. And I don't even care if you've never done a deal yet. If you've never done a deal, tell people what you are doing to find that deal. Show them what you're going through. Show them the struggle. Show them your ups. Because when it comes down to building trust from social media, it really just depends on what you're sharing. For example, if on social media, you're just sharing all the fun times you're having with your friends, drinking and smoking and doing all these different things, people will think of you as a certain way. And if that is your image on social media, it's more than likely that that potential lender will not want to lend to you because they see that you're not super committed to this whole real estate thing. Your goal on social media is to bring as much awareness to what you're doing to all the people around you. Do anything you possibly can to portray yourself as the authority on the topic of real estate investing. If you're planning to raise private money for your real estate investing business, because it really doesn't matter if you have all this experience. What matters is would someone trust you or not? You can even be in a coaching program and utilize that. Show everyone how committed you are to this whole real estate investing thing. Tell them that you're in a coaching program. Tell them that you watch my videos on YouTube. Tell them that you have a mentor helping you. Do whatever you need to do as long as you're telling the truth to bring yourself as an authority. The other thing a potential lender is gonna to wanna to know is what can you do for me? And that question can be split up into two different questions. One, they wanna know how is my money secure? And two, they're gonna to wanna to know what kind of return will I get? And here's what you can say to them. If that lender plans to lend for the entire purchase of the property, you can let them know that the property will be secured by the home. So if you were ever to not perform and follow through with your work, that person could simply foreclose on the home and take the home and they end up with a home at a really good discount. So worst case scenario, they get to walk away with a home at a big discount. And obviously you don't want that to happen and you're gonna follow through with your word and pay them back when you finish flipping the home. As far as what returns they're gonna get, it really depends on what they're looking for. I'd encourage you to ask them what they're seeking. Some lenders will specifically want an interest rate return. Others will want an equity split or a profit split. It's completely negotiable between you two as far as what you agree upon and how they're gonna get paid. Just remember it's always better to split a deal than not do the deal at all. Remember that it's always better to split an entire watermelon with someone than have an entire grape to yourself. Also, if you wanna grow your real estate business, whether you're brand new or if you already have deals under your belt, DM me the word coach on Instagram at Justin, you're wrong. I'll see you at the next one.